video, what I'm going to be doing is showing you the 10 best Linux applications that I think you should install right away if you don't have them already. I guarantee there's something on this list for everybody, maybe a program that you didn't even know existed. So I'd recommend you check out this video. If you watch to the end, I'll have a couple bonus programs as well as some honorable mentions that I didn't think I could include in the video, but should be brought up to some extent. So let's jump on the computer and go through these programs real quick. So the very first application we're going to be getting into is called uLauncher. If I go over here and go to their website, you can see this is kind of a little preview of what it looks like. What it is is a system extension that gives you a really easy to access search functionality that allows you to search for various applications, websites, file directories, actual files on your system. Overall, it's beautiful and a great thing to have. By default, how you access it is just hitting the control and space button at the same time, and it will bring up something that looks like this. Once this is up, you could go ahead and start searching for something. For example, let's say I want to open up VLC. It gives me the VLC media player. Click on that and it will launch VLC. And you can open up the search bar from anywhere. You don't have to be on your desktop. For example, if I hit it again, it comes up and I can open up something else from here such as VirtualBox, and it will open that up. So it's it's just really nice. It really increases your productivity. It's way easier to do that than to go like here, and then let's go VLC and open it up that way, versus just going boom, and I can type V, L, enter, and we're good to go. Another thing is this is customizable. So if I go ahead and open it up and I click this little gear icon here, it brings up the preferences and some other settings. So here you can change the actual hotkey, so how you open it. You can change the color theme, so there's a couple options. If I go to elementary dark, and then go ahead and open it up, you can see it's dark now. And you can download more themes from their website. You have a couple settings here. If I click show frequent apps and then hit it, it will show me apps I frequently access through this. And then render on, you can say what monitor you want it to be on. You could add shortcuts, so you can see by default there's a Google search, Stack Overflow, and Wikipedia. So, for example, if I open this up again, I type G space, and then I can type something in, such as techhut.tv. Hit enter, it will search the web for techhut.tv. There's also extensions, so this will completely add way more functionality to it. If you just go ahead and click on Discover Extensions, you can see their entire extension directory here, such as better shortcuts. There's a Docker Hub search, dictionary, exit plasma. So for example, if I were to click on this one, it gives you the logout, reboot, and shutdown functionality within that. And overall, it is something that I would highly recommend everybody install in their system. And the reason I went ahead and did this application first is because I will be using it to open up all the other applications on this list. So coming in at number two is an application called Stacer. This is a advanced system monitor as well as a system cleaner. You can see here it gives me some basic information about my computer as well as some gauges so I can see what exactly is going on in my computer as well as some network things. But well, the real fun is, is over here, if you go down all of these tabs, you can mess with your startup applications, enable and disable all of those. You can see U launchers right here. Go down, you have a system cleaner, so you can go ahead and scan and see what's going on there. For example, if I go to package caches, search, it will say I have 309, almost half, well, over half a gigabyte of data within here that my system does not need that it could go ahead and get rid of. If I go under search, this is where you can search for different files and things like that. Right here is the services, so what is running on your computer in the background, so you can go through and enable, turn these off, start them. From here you have your processes, just like the Windows Task Manager, and it, this is basically all the functionality of the system monitor with a little bit extra tweaks and better user interface. If you go down here, you have an uninstaller, so you go and see all the different applications and packages on your system, and you can install them through here. This is a graph to see what is going on on your computer, so you can see all the different cores and what they're doing and when they're spiking. And the good thing about this is versus the system monitor, this is pulls data from the past. The system monitor starts on open and it slowly starts to fill in the data, but this is 
available right away. If you go under helpers, you can see all your different IP addresses, the hosts, and everything connected to your system. From here, you have your repository manager, and this is a feature I really like because let's say you add a repository that has an error, you could go through and actually remove the repositories through here or enable and disable them, edit them, or you can directly add repositories through here. Next, we have the GNOME settings. I'm not using GNOME on this. This is a Ubuntu Bungie, so this doesn't really relate to me, but this could be beneficial to you. And then last but not least, the actual Stacer settings. So you can go through, change the language, the disks, the startup page, so you can change that to something like the uh, processes, if that's the main thing you use this for, or whatever you want. So that is that application. Now moving on to number three. Next up is a program called TimeShift. Now TimeShift is a wonderful system utility that completely backs up your system. It backs up everything on it from your settings, your tweaks, your changes, your packages that are installed, everything. It takes a full snapshot of your system. So you can see I ran one earlier today and it really just makes the entire process extremely easy. So if I were to create one right now, you can see it'll start compiling it. It'll tell you how long it's gonna take. It has all the different changes, everything that's going on, the timestamps, the size of it. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that for now. Restoring is really easy. All you need to do is click on the actual snapshot that you're gonna to want to restore to. So for example, if you went through and you did a bunch of tweaks on your system that you're like, ah, this didn't turn out so great. You could literally just go back, click, restore to a snapshot and your computer will be how it was exactly on that snapshot. So restoring, you just click on it, you click restore, you select the devices that it's gonna use and then you go through the process from here. The thing I really like about this is if you go under settings, you can set a schedule so it will automatically create snapshots for you. So all right now I have it set to weekly, keep three, so every week it will create a snapshot on the computer and it will keep three of them so after the third one is created, it will delete the, late, the oldest one as it creates a new one. You could have this do it on every single boot, hourly, daily, and monthly, depending on what you're doing and what your needs are. And there's way more options from the users, different filters so you can enable or disable certain folders, and you can change the time formatting and things like that. Overall, this is a great thing. Everybody should be running in the background. I recommend everybody be doing at least a weekly snapshot because you never know what's gonna happen. You never know what little thing you're gonna try to do or even if something gets corrupted. It makes you feel a lot better knowing this is running in the background. And better yet, you can actually use, well, you can actually restore these backups through a live disk image. So let's say something really bad happened on your computer. You could boot a Ubuntu on a USB, install time shift, and then pull one of your snapshots from your hard drive, and then restore that hard drive with that snapshot. So I'd recommend everybody go check that out, download it, and get backing up your system. And coming in at number five is the go-to video editing software, Kaden Live. That does really, really good. The functionality is near perfect as everything you'd ever need for anything from slapping some home movies together to creating projects like this. This video is going to be edited in Kaden Live, so any features, animations, effects, or anything like that will be from this program, and it's really straightforward to use. Now, just as a honorable mention, I do use DaVinci Resolve, but the reason I'm kind of leaning towards Kaden Live at the moment is because DaVinci Resolve is having issues or doesn't really support MP4 files that well on Linux. But if that wasn't the case, DaVinci Resolve would be on this list instead of Kaden Live. But for now, Kaden Live gets to hold the crown and be the best video editor on Linux. And from there, that will take us to number five and that is Simple Note. Simple Note is a really, really good piece of software. It's, as said in the title, a simple note-taking software. So you can see here, it kind of has the um, Evernote format where you have your things over here and you can just type your notes in. Uh, it has tags, so you go ahead and add tags for different things going on. And if you add tags, it makes categorizing and searching things really, really easy. The cool thing about it too is it is available on all the other platforms, so Windows, 
ISO, Android, so you can have all your notes synced throughout your various devices. And there are some settings so you can toggle the sidebar on and off. You can check the history, share notes straight from here, um, delete them, get some information so you can see how much words, characters, you could pin it to the top. And you could check Markdown if you want to to enable some formatting options. And it has a really good search feature so you can search for different tags. So it search all the notes for those keywords or you can search by tag. Go to Linux and then this is my top 10 Linux apps notes. So that is another beautiful piece of software I would recommend to you. And now for number six, you saw us open it earlier. That is VLC. Now we all know VLC as the media player that can play just about anything. It's an absolute gem and a must install for everybody but a lot of people don't know that it can do a lot more than that. For example, if you click on media, you can do a convert and save, so you can convert different file formats through it. You can stream different content from it, so if there's a stream going on on the internet or you have a media file that is on the internet, instead of downloading it, you can stream the file to your computer through VLC. And another thing you could do is actually record your screen through this. So if I open capture device like this, I can set my capture device as my desktop, or you could even do your webcam audio jack so you can record audio. But if you want to like record your desktop, you do that. You would select your fire. You'd select your desired frame record. So not 0.1, that'd be painful, but you pump that up and then you play and that will record your desktop. And this is, and you can play discs through here as well, but this is just a couple of the features through VLC. There are tons of different things you could do through it. So I'd highly recommend you download this and kind of explore all the different functionality and tools through VLC. It is a much more intricate program than what you may see just by opening it up and looking at this sad little cone right here. And next on my list is actually a program called GNOME Tweaks. Now I'm not running GNOME on this system, I'm actually running Bungie, but GNOME Tweaks is perfect for anybody who's actually running the GNOME desktop. It allows you to do all kinds of different changes. It allows you to control things like your Windows title bars, your docklet settings, just about anything you can imagine that are general customization this program will allow you to kind of tweak and edit around i uploaded a video of the top five things to do when you install pop os and installing gnome tweaks was one of those because you need it to enable the minimize and maximize buttons on your window title bar so for anybody running gnome this is one of those programs that you need to download install and go through every single setting so you can customize your system to exactly the the way you want it to be now next on our list is a little tool called etcher now what this will do is allow you to easily create bootable usb disk images from iso files now this is really important especially if you're somebody like me who loves downloading various linux flavors and distributions installing them onto a usb and loading up the live disk image to kind of test them out this is the tool that you may want to use it works anytime i've ever used it it's clean simple uh, you can flash it from a file or URL. So if I click flash from file, I could go through and find some of my ISOs. So I know if I go into other, other locations, storage, go to my name, ISO, and I have quite a few to choose from here. And let's say I were to want to do just a regular Ubuntu ISO. I could click that, open it, and it will load it there. Select my target. So I pick the only USB available, hit select, and click flash. And it's as simple as that. It will start, uh, it'll wipe the USB, write the ISO disk image to it, and you'll be able to plug it in and boot to your computer with no problem. Now, some Linux distributions already come with a USB writer. This one is still worth checking out. If you use something like Pop OS, they already have a USB writer that is really good. But if you do not have one and you're looking for one, this is definitely what I'd go with. You can see there's a couple settings here but I've never even opened this. This is everything you need. It does everything you want it to do. The GUI is clean and it is a nearly perfect piece of software. Now coming in at number nine, we have GIMP. GIMP is a professional photo editing program. It is the GNU image manipulation program and it is the next best thing to Photoshop. 
It does lack some functionality compared to Photoshop, but for somebody like me who usually spends their time doing something like creating YouTube thumbnails, it is the absolute perfect piece of software. It works kind of in the same way as Photoshop because everything is done through layers, which is really nice. You can see it's right over here. You can add layers and move them around. You'll have all the tools you'll need over here, such as your text tools, paint brushes, your magic wands. Nearly everything that you come to expect in a program like this is here. Now I just switched to Linux, so I am relatively new to it, so I still have a little bit of a learning curve to jump over. I know it's available on Windows too, but I've been using Photoshop and I don't want to go through the hassle to try to get that running in Wine, so I'm going to force myself to learn this. But I have used it quite a while ago and it is still true to being the best native photo editor available in Linux today. And I would highly recommend you go and check it out. Now coming in at number 10 is one of my favorite things, Notepad QQ. Now I use Notepad++ absolutely religiously on Windows, mostly for YML editing and it's great for opening up sketchy looking text files to see what they say. But essentially this has all the same functionality and it looks identical to Notepad++. You can see on the screen a older video I did on working with Notepad++ in a YML file. I really like how it automatically recognizes a tons of different programming language and color codes the text with that language in mind so you can have a better idea of what you're looking at and how things are formatted. Overall, it is a great text editor. Even for just normal text, it's just a beautiful program. There are times that you're going to need something like this and this is my go-to text editor. I will have a couple honorable mentions later on. For other text editors, I have a little bit more features, but for just a general use factor, this one is my go-to. And that takes us to number 11, the bonus, and that is NeoFetch. If you go ahead and open up your terminal and just type in NeoFetch, hit enter, it will bring this up. You may have seen this before of people taking screenshots, this is just a pretty way of showing off what you're currently running and some of your system specs and just what's going on on your computer. You can see here it has the Ubuntu logo because I'm running Ubuntu Bungie, but this does change depending on what distro you're running. So like the Pop! OS ones, the Pop! OS logo, Arch is the A, it's, it's just a kind of pretty way to do it. You see this most commonly used on probably like Reddit or Facebook groups of people trying to flex their system but it is still a great little addition to everybody's computer. And that about wraps that up. Like I said, there'll be a link in the description for everything you've seen in this video. If you do think there's something I missed or that wasn't included that you think deserves its honorable spot, go ahead and leave that in the comments down below. I will be doing a video just like this soon, but it will cater more to people who do video editing, photo editing, just general content creation, so subscribe for that. I will be uploading more videos like this very soon. You can check out my other ones. I have a video on comparing Pop! OS and Solus, as well as a Pop! OS video of the five things you should do as soon as you install that operating system. I hope you have a great day. Like I said, please comment, give this video a thumbs up if it's helped you out in any sort of way. Subscribe, ring the bell, and goodbye.